Hello everyone, this is Leo Saron and welcome to another vlog where I talk about my projects and my life. So this week I will continue last week's system of playing a video game while I speak about stuff. Let's have some fun with Super Smash Bros. 64 today. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is that I finished watching Evangelion finally. And you know, I've heard many times before about it having a weird ending. And I'll spoil some of it now. Uh, I'll be quick, but be warned. So the ending is not a fight against a big monster like most mech animes have. Because Evangelion is an a mech anime, but differently. It's more the, the the couple last episodes aren't about fights. It's about some philosophy presented in a very surrealistic way, subconscious, like diving into the subconscious of the characters, and I think it's very interesting, I don't think it should be a big fight by any means, I think it can work like the way it is now, but even being a philosophy piece, it's not the kind of philosophy I expect from the rest of the anime. Like, I'd expect something about a reflection of humans trying to be gods by playing with life and playing with nature. But no, it's nothing like that. It's a reflection about the human condition and loneliness. It's nothing I expected. Of. Even though I recognize its value and I do think it's interesting, I don't dig that very much. I don't think it was a stellar ending by any means. But even so, the anime overall was really enjoyable for me. And yes, I'd recommend it to friends and stuff, but I don't need to do that because it's already made a name for itself for more than two decades. Two decades? <laughs> two decades now. So I am watching Darling in the Pranks also from Studio Trigger. And I'd, I'd like to say that the last episode made me more hyped about that anime than the previous ones. I was considering giving up on it because it was so boring. But now I've got a glimmer of hope for that. Uh, I will insist on it a little more. And I just realized uh, last Friday, last Friday that new, the anime of Psyche K, the disastrous life of Psyche K got more episodes on Netflix, so I, I started watching that, because it's a funny anime, and I and I, I haven't watched as many comedies as, uh, as I could lately, and I'm enjoying that, and just today, no, just yesterday, I started re-watching the sixth season of Voltron on Netflix, so that I can refresh my mind, for when I'm going to watch the final season of Voltron, that's the seventh. And I'm really hyped about that, it's the, the thing I'm watching that I'm most hyped about right now, because I love Voltron so much. And you know, uh, last day, <laughs> yesterday, on Sunday, I watched the first of the six OVAs of Kuri Kuri, which is a OVA series by Gainet. And I must say that after watching the 30 minutes of the first episode, I, I, I can truly tell you that I'm really, really not interested in watching the rest of it at all. And it made me rethink, like I had this goal of watching everything from the Gainet and Studio Trigger, but it made, you, it made me think that Instead of compromising to watch everything, I will try watching everything and see what I like. Because if Darling in the Franks turns bad for me again, I'll give up on it. I already gave up on Fruity Kuri, and there is so much good thing to watch out there. If I stay, if I imprison myself to watching a certain things, I will, I will waste a lot of, of time and opportunity because I simply don't have time to watch everything that's good out there. That's how I'll do things. So I, I've been playing Dead Cells, that 2D indie game that my friend gave me. 
and I've been having a lot of fun with it. I finally was able to defeat the the, the first big boss from Black Bridge a couple of times now. The first time I did it because I found a super good skill that allows you to teleport behind the enemy. It's like Omayo Amo Shindero stuff. It's really good, it's really fun. But I, I, I was able to, to reach the second boss with that skill, but the second boss <laughs> gave me a beating even so because in the second boss you've gotta be really you've gotta be really good at evading its grappling hook and I was not aware of that and I got a couple of grabs from him and when he grabs you he does some serious damage uh, to, but it, I, I have a lot of fun with that game and I will still have more fun to come that self is amazing and I've gotta say that I've been playing mostly side-scrolling games for the past years and I realized that some of my depth perception has been damaged because of that because I stay working on the computer for most of the day then when I'm going to have fun I'm, I play 2D games my depth has been compromised and that was really shown to me when I tried replaying Mario 64 or when I or when I played Mario 3D World in the recent time my and it was also shown to me it was also confirmed to me yesterday when I was playing swordplay which is a sport with with softened swords it's like we deal swords and spears and axes with soft material that allows us to hit, hit each other really hard without armor and without hurting anyone. So that... Uh, yesterday I was fighting with a sword against a lance guy and when he thrusted me I couldn't grasp the speed of his thrust very well but I could grasp the speed of slices of swords very well. It's like... I've got accustomed to calculating speed sideways, but not in depth. Uh, it's really interesting, but I'll talk mo more about yesterday uh, in a few moments. So I, I've been thinking that I, I saw one uh, rumor about a new Nintendo Direct that would reveal Dixie Kong and some other characters as playable in Smash Ultimate, and I'd like to say that I really want to see Dixie Kong there. Uh, and not as an echo of Didi, because she's got a whole other thing going on with her hair. Her moveset could be very well centered about her hair, while Didi Kong has nothing of that. Like, doing a Dixie Kong that doesn't attack with her hair would be a huge waste of opportunities for a new moveset type. And talking about Smash, starting last Saturday, I played a lot of Smash 64 these days, and that's why I'm playing it now, and I am enjoying it a lot. It's like the basis of my love for Smash Brothers. And I've gotta say that I realized some things that this game's rhythm is not very fast, and the game is quite floaty compared to Melee. And for most of the time, I realized that I don't like Brawl because it's floaty and slow compared to Melee. But I must say that's not that really, because I love Smash 64 and it's also floaty and not as fast as Melee. And I realized that I might like Melee and 64 way more than Brawl for some other reasons. Maybe. Of course, the speed is also important for me. And Smash 64 is still faster than Brawl, even though it's not a match to Melee. Uh, rhythm is important. But there is some other things, and that's the relationship, the balance between the attack and the fence. That was cool, huh? The bounce. Like, oh shit, I wasn't supposed to do this. It's the balance between having options when being comboed and having options while comboed. If your game is too much like floaty and without hit stun you won't be able to do any combos but and that's not fun at all while losing a stock 
and by being comboed once without options is also not fun. Smash Bros. 64 is a game where a good player will combo you zero to death. But my experience with it is not really of high level gameplay. Just a few days I played high level gameplay and I like playing mid term gameplay, like doing L cancelling, doing some some combos I know to some extent, but not that thing of zero to death. I don't know. There's rhythm is important. I'm I'm I am i i can not come up with a very concise, a very good formula as to what I like in Smash Brothers as of now. But this balance between attack and defense is one of these factors I must say that I found out recently. But you know, it's still not as floaty as bro, and it's still not as low as bro. And it's got it, the way some mechanics play out. Like I love having L cancel to play with, but even before I played with L cancel, I I still love this game. And did you know? I think that Smash 64 would work very well with a port on 3DS. Like for some reason, I think it would work very well as a mobile game if you could enhance the graphics and give us online multiplayer and put it on 3DS, I think Smash 64 will do really well. And overall, I must say that I'm realizing that Nintendo 64 is my favorite console for multiplayer gaming. My favorite Smash Brothers is not on 64 because it's melee. My... My favorite games separately from each franchise, most of all ain't on Nintendo 64 perhaps, but the multiplayer it has there are amazing, like my friends got Nintendo Switch and I have a lot of fun playing at his house, but I must say that I've had the most fun on multiplayer when I took my Nintendo 64 to his house before he got the Nintendo Switch. Because we play Smash Bros 64, we play... Mario Party 3, which is amazing. I like Mario Party 3 way more than I like the more recent Mario Parties, to be honest. We play Diddy Kong Racing, which is an amazing multiplayer game. We play Mario Kart 64, which is probably still my favorite from the franchise. Perhaps, no, I think I like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe more, but 64, it, it's just a little above 64, you know. And that, that's it, I don't play GoldenEye, but I do think it's also an amazing game for shooter fans. And I wish, like, new consoles had more multiplayer focus that aren't shooters and that aren't super casual games. No, it's weird, but I think I feel that Nintendo 64 is great. I'll never get rid of my. So, yesterday was a funny day because after months wanting to go there, I finally went to Ibirapuera Park in my city and played swordplay bothering with some people in my training. And it was really, really amazing. I had a lot of fun. I already talked about how I saw that my depth perception is damaged and I also realized that my stamina is damaged and my reflexes are damaged because I've been away from judo for a long time because I have some injuries in my body that I'm... some mus muscular injuries that I've been taking care of for the past year so I've been about almost one year away from judo it's a long time. I've been training at home, doing some martial arts exercises at home, but it's not, that's not the same thing. Because I don't have to practice my reflexes against other people when my depth perception is only enhanced by... is only trained by me against the punching bag, you know? It's not the same thing at all, and of course, I can do some stamina exercises at home, but it's not... What I do is not the same... It's not as intense as going to a ju judo session or a sword play session and fighting a lot with other people. Yeah, but I am taking care of these injuries and last week I finally went to the doctor 
to see some other problems I have for a long time. Uh, yes, I have to. I, I have to do some blood tests and stuff because I haven't done a checkup in years, and I and I mean ten plus years, perhaps. Oh, dude. So I gave them my blood, and I realized that I am a wimp to in injections. Like my veins are bro broad, but I am traumatized to injections because when I was very little, I was born with some problems, like I had headaches and stuff, and I had to take care of myself a lot, and I went to the hospital many times, and I even had to take out some liquid from my spine with, with uh, a needle and stuff, and those things traumatized me for life. Like, I can withstand other kinds of pain, but the pain of having a needle on my on my arm, it really gets to me. So when they took my blood, I was really distressed. I was really, 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 really feeling bad. To the point that, at some point, my stress made my arm so stiff that the blood stopped coming and they almost had to do another hold in my arms. But she was able to pull it and I was really glad I didn't have to have another needle on another, another point of me. That sounds weird if you want to, but that, don't take it that way. I'm talking seriously now. And I'm doing other exams. The, Doctor saw that I have no insects on my ears because I have a lot of scratching inside of them. And he realized that I have some dead skin in the eyes. Sorry I'm talking about things that aren't really pleasant right now, but just want to, wanted to mention that briefly. And I'll return to the doctor next week and I'll see what the tests went, how the tex tests went, what I have to take care of. And that's it. So also, also I wanted to talk about, is YouTube falling? Because, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTube creators, a lot of people who make their living on YouTube complaining about it becoming harder and harder to monetize on. And I must say that's not as... I am not someone who makes a living on YouTube, but I also have my complaints about it. As a an user and as a content maker, it's becoming worse. Yeah, because you know, as a user, for example, we've, we're, we're having more and more ads on YouTube, each time more. And I mean, sometimes you will see two ads on a, on a video that started on the two, on the couple last week. Two ads per video. When the video starts, I'm not saying in the middle of long videos. Which is also crappy, but more under understandable than having to watch two fucking video ads before your your video starts. And some of them aren't skippable. Like YouTube is becoming more like television, and that's a bad thing because YouTube was supposed to be its own thing. You see? That's terrible. And do the, those ads help the creators? No, because they're complaining that their their ad revenue is practically no. So it's becoming just a marketing tool. It's terrible, man. YouTube started out as a place where you could post any kind of video without complications. Right now, it's becoming more and more bureaucratic and I really don't like it at all. It's terrible. Like... Okay, perhaps not super terrible, but it's it's going away. It's going away that I'm really not satisfied with it. Like I, their copyright. Of course, it's important to protect copyright, and when you have such a big platform as YouTube is, you gotta protect people. But they're doing it the wrong way, man. I think they've gotta work a long way if they if they're not to lose power. I think. YouTube is not replaceable in short term, but I do believe that anytime soon people will start migrating to other platforms in order to pull certain kinds of things, you know, that YouTube is blocking. 
And of course, I'm not talking about pornography or anything like that, or anything illegal. It's just that there are some kinds of videos that YouTube is making harder to produce. And I do believe that people will look another way to go. And people will get bored of all those ads that give revenue to nobody outside of YouTube and they'll start to rebel and they'll start to seek other platforms. And if YouTube does nothing, it will still exist, it will still be relevant to some things, but to a huge amount of other content, we'll have other places to go. The internet is huge, we'll go there. Now I'm also working on my 3D world on Unity, and I am also working on more animation for my game, and that's what I'm doing. I've got no other news for you guys, and I think I'll round up here today, and that's it. I haven't got a lot to talk about my projects, but I hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Bye bye.